For this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use a soldering iron. Uh, and so when you're soldering, you're going, to need, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a soldering iron stand. You're going to need a soldering iron that's plugged in. And you're going to need some solder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this green wire and this white wire and I'm going to solder them together. So while we're waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, it's a good idea to grab a paper towel and just get it moist. That's to clean up the soldering iron. And it's also good to just kind of get your solder ready. So I'm going to just take some from the roll. Here's my solder. I'm just going to break it off. Return the soldering roll back to your teacher. And I'm just going to twist this up. So that allows me to poke it into where I need to solder. Again, as the soldering iron is heating up, uh, it's a good idea to get the two pieces joined uh, mechanically. So I'm just going to take these two pieces of wire, I'm just going to twist them together so they hold in place. And I, you know you have done a good job when essentially it kind of stays together. I'm going to bend them and use this little third hand here just to kind of keep everything in place. Okay, now to use the soldering iron. When you're using the soldering iron, you essentially hold it the same way that you hold a pencil. So that's how I hold my pencil. Just be careful. The tip is hot. Don't touch it. This area here is also hot. Don't touch it. Because you're putting your soldering iron in a stand, this coil will also get hot. Don't touch it. The only safe place to hold it is in that handle, the plastic handle. The other thing that you kind of want to do is make sure that you're not accidentally going to solder your cord. So my cord is over there. As you can start to see, my soldering uh, iron is really dirty, so I'm going to start to clean it. I'm going to wipe it in on this rag. Always do that after every solder joint. And so now my soldering iron is cleaner. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to tin the soldering iron. That is taking the solder and just melting a bit on the soldering iron. Now, you're gonna take the soldering iron and you're just going to hold it on the bottom of the wire. What I'm doing is I'm essentially getting the wire hot. Take the soldering, or take the solder, and just drop it on the top. And when it's hot enough, the solder will melt onto the wire. So let's see this again. I'm going to show you again the correct way, and then I'm going to show you a common mistake. So I've cleaned up my soldering iron, just tinned it a little bit. Now again, soldering iron goes down on the bottom, solder goes up on the top. I'm heating the wire so that the wire gets hot enough that it melts the solder. So. Right now, soldering iron goes on the bottom, and I'm going to just start to tap it with solder. And the solder will kind of flow. So notice how my soldering iron is there. My solder is on the other end. That's enough to permanently make that connection. So this is a common mistake um, for someone who's soldering for the first time. And so this is what you want to avoid doing. You're not painting, so you're not taking solder, melting it onto the soldering iron, 
and then pasting it on. You're not trying to paint, nor are you trying to bleed the solder on with the soldering iron together. What you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the soldering iron on the bottom, the solder on the top, and melting it. So it should look like this. So they're not actually touching. What you should avoid is putting a giant ball of solder and then pasting it on. This is bad. The next type of soldering that you're going to do, and the most common type, is you're going to take electronic components and you're going to put them into your circuit board. So your circuit boards are either perf boards, like this, with the individual holes all lined out, or they're the cool printed circuit boards that you've made in my class. But whether you're doing these ones or these ones, I'm going to go over how to solder components on without roasting your board. So the very first thing to be aware is that when you are soldering, the solder always goes on the copper side. So when you take your component, you're going to bend it. So there's your component that's bent like this. And if you look on any circuit board, there's the copper side and there's the non-copper side. On the printed circuit board, here's the copper side, here's the non-copper side. And so when you're sticking electronic components in, you want to stick them going into the non-copper side. Like this. If you're putting them in this way, you're soldering it wrong. Another good tip when you're putting things into the circuit board is that you want the electronic component to lie flat, like this. What you want to avoid is when you're putting components in, to have them very high up. So for example, this, if I soldered it like this, this would be bad, you want this lower. And the reason why you want this lower, if this component accidentally bends over, it will create a short with this other component over here. So you want your electronic component to lie flat on the board before you solder it. Whenever we're soldering an electronic component into our circuit board, we want to be very careful not to overheat our circuit board. These traces and these pads are essentially copper stickers. And you can see, if I'm not too careful and I apply way too much heat, I can actually burn that sticker right off. And then that will give you a lot of trouble in the future. So when we're soldering a component on, we want to apply heat very quickly, apply some solder there really quickly, and then get out as fast as we can. We can always come back later. So let me show you what I mean. So first, we're going to clean our soldering iron. So it should be nice and shiny. Then we're going to tin our soldering iron. Very quickly, we're going to come in and apply heat. We're going to melt the solder on and we're going to get out as quick as we can. It should look like a tiny volcano. So this is an example of what a good soldering job would look like. As you can see, this little cylinder is the close-up of the metal lead, or that little metal stick that comes out of the component. And as you can see, it is completely clothed in solder, much like a scarf. And you can see it runs down like a pyramid so that it covers up that pad over there. So that's a good soldering job. So I'll show you that again. Tin it a little bit. Apply some heat. Apply some solder, push the solder in, and then get out. Let it cool off. And it should look like a tiny volcano. We can always come back with our soldering iron and just kind of clean that up. It can remelt and reform. So it can remelt and reform.
So you know it's a good solder joint if I try to tug at this component and it doesn't come off the circuit board. If I tug at it, the electronic component should not wobble like that. If I look and turn the circuit board over, I can see why that happened. Number one, I forgot to solder this end. And number two, I actually toasted this sticker and the sticker just burned right off.